So, Princess Europe, you thought you could get away from the might of Germany. Well, you are wrong. You are now under our control to see fit to our rule. No, no, I don't want to be in the German control. No, not so fast, Germany. The Allies. I should have known you would come up. Yeah, that's right. We are here to liberate Europe as I just knocked my buddy down. Hi, honey. Now you're going to pay Americans for interfering with Germany. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Hey, what did you do that? The same thing I'm gonna do with you, Soviet. <laughs> and you too, Brit. <laughs> now, Europe, you are now under our control. No, no, I hate you. Leave me alone. But yet, I find your strength so overwhelming. Of course you do. We have steel and preparation and order. And you love order, and you know it. No, leave me alone. You kiss me. No, no, yes, no, no, yes. Hee, hee. Uh, your steel is so big. Field Marshal Fist of Fury. What? Can anyone knock anymore before entering my chambers? Did you say anything? No, sir. I haven't seen you want your wet dream of you Germany has taken over the world by just playing around with tanks. Good. Now, don't bother me until unless it's something important. God! Actually, there is a problem that we have to acquire your attention. It seems Wargaming has stolen a couple of your German panzers from the garage and turned them into abominations. What? The Ocelots that took our panzers? What panzers did they do, Kamlad? Well, according to the charts, here's the records. I think I will see myself out. Before we get into this review, guys, I have a very huge problem with Wargaming right now. It's not just something with you guys. It's nothing to, like, uprise and go against Wargaming. Believe me, I would love to. But I have a huge problem with it. They took away one of the key features that I usually use to edit my videos, and that is the replayability. Now, you're probably wondering, that's just a useless feature. But it isn't for me, because if you've seen my past videos, I usually show off the tank in a nice camera angle sort of way to showing off the beauty of the tanks. But unfortunately though, they just removed it like every other feature in the game and bare minimum of everything else. Will we ever get it back? I don't know. But until then, you're just going to have to deal with slideshows showing the tank instead of just, you know, showing cool effects and stuff like that of the Panzer. So my apologies, audience, but let's get right into the review, shall we? So, let's get to the garage. God, I miss editing. <laughs> Alright, so here we are in the garage. Now, we're going to talk about today, as you already tell from the joke from the very beginning of this video, we are going to be talking about Hot Wheels, which is, you're probably going, Huh? What? 
Fury, are you losing your marbles? Season pass is already done. Like, seriously, we don't need it. Like, it's already done. Kaput. Gone. Falsel Felicio. Gone Alanto. No, it's not gone. They just brought it back. And if you want proof, I'll show you in the store. And just in case of your new audience, the TV screen's over here. Cam's here. So I'm not trying to ignore you. So my apologies if I watch this. Um, They brought the Hot Wheels back, surprisingly. For, I'm guessing, a good week, since it has six days. So, by the time you see this video, it'd probably be a little bit late. But, you know, basically, we're going to be talking about this stuff here. So, what are they brought back from the Hot Wheels? Well, obviously, everything, including the Fang... Uh, I think it was called the Fangling? Fangland? My, my apologies for English reading. And the Death Dozer, which... Ugh, I... We could do our own topic video on that tank another day that I ugh, just don't like it. Please leave in the comments if you want to see my review on that tank. But I think today, to be fair, we're going to talk about the two main tanks of the Hot Wheels. Now, don't get me wrong. Bulldozer, Spa Panzers, like the whole Spa Panzer duos, there's like four of them, which, God, Wargaming, why? Why do we need four of them, Wargaming? Four of them, and they're not even different. They're all the freaking same, for God's sakes. What is wrong with you? I swear, you need to be taken out back and shut if you're running out of ideas. God. So, I'm not going to review them because I've done it in Facebook. If you want it on YouTube, just leave a comment down below, audience, if you want to know that as well. But I think we're going to review the two main tanks, besides the Fangling, that's the Tier 9. But you can get a non-skinned version, but we're talking about the ones that you don't get besides Hot Wheels. And that is the Bone Shaker and Roger Dodger. God, I, I love that tank audience. It just feels like you're just like a droid that's just going, Roger Dodger, Roger Dodger, Roger Dodger, from the, you know, Star Wars series. So, let's get into the garage. I'll pull up the first one, which will be Roger Dodger. Okay, audience, sorry about that. See, the beauty of editing, you didn't have to wait long. To me... God, it was hard playing with the filters, which I hate this update with a passion. But we'll get to that another time if you want to see a video of me ranting about this. But right now, let's talk about Roger Dodger, or as the Germans call it, the E75TS, which is the prototype of the lion, or in my country, Lowe. And literally, it is the Lowe's head with the King Tiga's body. Which is beautiful, in my opinion. Oh. So, as anyone knows me by offhand, we're going to review its armor real quick. So, let's get to the armaments. And, as what do you expect? It has the whole armor of the Tiger, uh, King Tiger, and basically has 120 millimeters, Which is beautifully designed in its way. Now... The ones that have the highest armor is obviously the main turret front armor, but there's also flat pieces, which could be easily penned if you don't be careful, as long as you don't have a gun that pens over 240 millimeters, which, again, a lot of tier 8s do have that. So don't expect to, um, you know, like any tank cannot pen that. It, it can be penned if you don't be careful, but you do have that gun metal underneath it if, you, if I point to it right here in the editing. Yeah, you can still block it a little bit, but just because it's like it could still go through there, so be mindful. Um, but it has the same problems as a King Tiger's whole armor. The hull is not good in this game. I mean, don't get me wrong, King Tiger's whole armor in any other game, beautiful. But Wargaming freaked that up more than anything, like more like the Italians goofing up on Stalingrad. <laughs> and an old German joke right there. <laughs> um... So, it's like you got the whole armor angled at 45 degrees of pretty much 150 millimeters of armor in the front of the turret, well, not turret, I mean, front of the whole armor, which the problem is having only that angle, plus it's 120 plus angled would be 150, but it still gets penned very easily by high pending guns. Mostly anything that's like a T-34 or a Udis from the Swedes with a long good pen can pen through your whole armor. So my advice to you Germans out there that have the Roger Dodger is to always hold down in it. The head is maybe mediocre, but it has 
some spa-liner capabilities. It even has a little skirt around the tank's crust, making it even harder for any tank to pen through it a little bit, making it beautiful to block. As you can see by the way how the color is, if I could turn it just right, you got some different color variations of the spa-line armor on it. Now, is it good at blocking everything? Nine? No, it just doesn't do its job against, you know, high-powered guns like Soviet's Hesh or Heat, in that matter. Heat is, like, the worst thing for Germany's to block. But with the round-shaped head, you have a better chance of blocking a lot of stuff than your whole armor, so keep that in mind. Now, for the skirts, the skirts, when I do them, it's, like, it's got 20 millimeters plus a gap. It, you would think like the skirts, well actually it's 5 millimeters, but if you count the gap between the shell going through the tank, it's a huge gap in between. Usually these designs are pretty good for Germany, like anyone who knows the Panzer IV design. The Panzer IV design was designed to take hits from sides from certain tanks from high explosive shells, which was beautiful for German ingenuity at the time to take a hit without killing the tank. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't work well in wargaming. <laughs> this, no. Um, in this, it's like the problem with the tank, it's when you go through with the shell, it will still go through it. So all you're doing is reducing damage. So my advice, still don't show your side, even with the skirt. You have a chance of blocking it, maybe, but it's still going to pen through you if you don't be careful. Now, it has some interesting features on it. But we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go to the upgrades. Oh, not upgrades. I meant loadout. My apologies. So, the Roger Dodger has a long barrel of the 10.5 kilometer gun. To you Americans, it's called the 105 millimeter cannons. When us Germans, we use math renderation, so it's 10.5 kilometer gun which is a length 71, which is extremely accurate. This thing is really accurate at pretty much good long range. It's got a precise shooting, great at pretty much damage for 386.76. That's if you hit it right. But remember, it's always when I play this tank, it always does like 300 or 295 because of the perks in this game. The reduced damage. Um, penetration for millimeters is 198.5, but if you look on the very top, right above me head here, the penetration of the gun is 227 for its normal AP rounds, and it's 360 damage, but again, I've seen it done less to, um, you know, 299 to 310 is usually average. If I usually high roll like that, it's because I aim at something very weak. Now, the it also has a PCR for premium rounds. It has pretty much 282 millimeters of penetration, which is good, because unfortunately these tanks go to tier 10s, and I don't understand why Wargaming, like I'm grabbing you by the throat right now, why are you making tanks go up two tiers higher? Do you not learn anything from World of Warships? I'm just getting out of character for a minute. Like, do you not learn anything from World of Warships? Nobody wants to go two tiers higher no more. It's always one tier higher. Because then the tank can do something. I mean, yes, a 10.5 kilometer length 73 can actually do something. But unfortunately, not a lot. Not a lot. To where, I get it, you're trying to make it where the Panzers have to rely on teammates. But you know, everybody knows that's a joke here. There's no, there's no teammates in this game. Uh, I wish I could show you this in Proving Grounds, but yet they removed that feature, so my apologies for just talking through this and not showing it. I mean, you will see a battle of it. I have to play a game right now to show you the actual real-time event. So, then we got the um, main turret itself. You got viewing range of a 390, which is not bad. Um... Your turning radius is 22 degrees. Now, the turning radius is okay. It's not too bad. We'll sh I'll show it better in battle. Hit points is 1,500, which is 
pretty low for a heavy tank, especially when you see super heavy tanks like Defender and stuff. It's an average health for an aid, but I, like there's other tanks that have more hit points than that. But again, the whole purpose of a tank audience is to never get hit. The best armor is never get hit. So, engine. You got a horsepower of 1,280, which is, you got a decent speed up. It's, it's what you expect. You have a King Tiger's hull armor because you only go up to forward speed of 45. Makes sense because it is the King Tiger's hull armor. And you got a little bit more weight on, you know, on top of the head there. So, and then turret reverse speed, like turning backwards, is basically 18 kilometers, which... Again, retreating in this tank is not like the Brits with their Challenger tanks and stuff like that that can just zoom out of there faster than anything and be in the French. You can't really retreat with this tank. Wherever you are and you're trying to back up, it's not exactly fast. So plan ahead when you're about to engage an enemy. So, and now for the wheels. You got rotating uh, speed is 26 degrees. So turning it is okay. It's not too bad, but not good either. And now we got the radio is max range of 710. Again, average for the German Panzer to have a superior radios because during those times, Germany had superior radio to communicate with another one. It ain't like the Soviet Union that just had static, but still not a bad design. So Let's go to the loadout real quick to tell you the price of the ammunition. Well, obviously you can't see it because of my screen here. I will fix that later on, but I can't do it right now. But I will gladly give you the information. So, normal rounds. AP. You have good, decent pen, like I said. And you have module damage chance is 150. Basically, it's 1,000 pretty much 30 for one round fired. Which, again, it makes sense because this tank is superiorly accurate at some times. If RNGs don't fuck you, though. <laughs> but still, it's okay. I put 20 rounds in it. I don't put more or less because, again, this is a premium tank. You want to have the most money out of it. And you want to grip into that silver. And you want to feel money flowing through your hand like oil does. <laughs> but I guess that's how it usually is. But if you want to load premium, premium costs 4,000 credits. 4,000 credits. That's a lot of credits. Now, you can pay it with premium or silver. But, again, why would you pay gold when you can use silver? I mean, you see the money on the top of my screen here? There's like 26 million. Silver ain't not a problem. So never spam it with gold. I don't know why they give you that option. I just wish they take that away and just say... Here, you silver. Perfect. Anyway, back <laughs> to the story I was saying. For modular damage, same thing. More penetration. I carry 15 rounds. You don't have to carry that much because I know this is a premium money-making tank. Its main purpose is to make money. So, I would keep 15 because it does go into tier 10s and you have a chance to fight back. And if you're going for marks, I would recommend carrying that much. So, next we have high explosives. Now, this one has a blast radius out of anything that's different here. It's only 60 millimeters of pen, which means it can harm a light tank if it harms it, if you hit it just right. And artillery can be harmed as well. It hit in very, very weak spots. So, these high explosives has a splash radius of 1.91, which is, again... Not good. You have to have the tanks literally like this next to each other in order to do splash damage, which kind of useless. However, I pack seven of them, and they're only 650 credits. And I would say pack that because if you're the last one alive and you're low on health and you have to deal with an arty, then you can instantly one-shot it before it one-shots you. So, that being said... Now, for the officer, I can't tell you the officer, but I could tell you the perks that it needs, since this is a new commander. So that way, if you have the tank, I always put six cents on always beginning of my officer. You always want to know if you got detected. Saves your life many times. If you don't need it, that's fine. But let's show you the other perks that I recommend using for this tank 
to make it better. But unfortunately, I can't show it in this video. So my apologies. I don't have a lot of good commanders. But I will show you. Obviously, rapid reloading would benefit this greatly. Um, aiming time would benefit this, especially if you have to make quick games. And that's including snapshot. Snapshot would be another one that you need. Now, the other puck, too. Mace would be a beautiful one. Deadeye would be an optional one. Deadeye would be if you want to damage more modulars, get more credits. So be your guess and if you want to have Deadeye. And also, if you have free slots, I would recommend also Central Awareness. So you can increase your viewing range by 6%. And you also want Brotherhood of Arms. Oh, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I've said it all wrong all these years. I meant Born Leader, even though it's the same freaking ability. God damn it, Wargaming. Also, you want to also consider Arm Agility to where you have 5% less damage incoming. And probably Track Repair, too. So, in all those perks, like, you could mess around with it it is i will tell you this it is designed to hold down or snipe so my best guess to you is to make sure it's balanced enough however it's a big ass tank so don't involve concealment because concealment won't work on this tank because of how big it is but now i'm rambling on too much let me snap my fingers and we'll go straight to a game shall we see audience snap of a finger all right, so we are in a, oh God. <laughs> well, if I, yep, might as well fix my hair and, cause I'm ain't gonna do nothing in this game. Because there's a big, huge problem with this audience. It's called being in tier freaking tens. This is a nightmare for the tank because of how, I, it could be an accurate gun, but now I have to position myself in a way to make sure that Basically, that like I have to find places to snipe and make sure I don't get killed, especially when there's artillery. Now, my personal opinion with the tank while I'm trying to get in position right here, since I'm playing this real time, not recording it, so it's not like I could just talk willy-nilly and show a good game. So my apologies if I don't show any justice to this tank if I die too quick. So my apologies. But it won't judge the overall verdict, so enjoy the show. Me personally... I love the Roger Dodger, but I was very, very, very pissed off because the gun accuracy used to bend the Lo uh, Lova's um, gun. It was the Lion's gun accuracy when it first came out. I mean, you, you, if any old remember, veteran remembers this, it's like we used to had. Oh, I got six cents. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, can I aim in? Ah, crap. Like, you all remember the accuracy of the gun that was supposed to be superior at, like, sniping and hold down? Yeah, that's what it used to be. Christ, okay, what are you doing? I could still pen your underbelly. And there we go. First shot, 343. Uh, I'm trying to concentrate while talking, audience. I don't want to make a bad video, so my apologies. And like I mean, hold down. Sniping. Beautiful against these tanks, especially especially the Americanas that tries to snipe out in the field. Oh, so sad. Oh, your precious plume cuffs. And damaged him. Not bad. Although I am getting a little nervous by looking at the mini map while talking it. Yes, I'm trying to do three things at once, audience. I'm trying to look at the mini map and also realize that the south position is exposed. So someone could sneak up behind me and kill me. Right about now, if I don't be careful. In which I'm seeing a... Oh god, I'm not pronouncing that. That 122 patent. That's what I'm calling it. I I, I, I could not say that with a passion audience. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Keep getting six cents, but I don't want to get spotted. So far, it's... Like, okay game. I mean, I'm glad I blocked some shots. Okay, what do we got? M40, I need some assistance to take that out. I'm seeing a whiz tank. That seems my cue. And this is getting a little chancy, audience, so bear with me. Little nervous. 
Because where the hell are the, all the other panzers? Oh crap. God, I know I stole this kill, but screw it. <laughs> if I don't know why he was just sitting there waiting to shoot him. Wait, isn't that, does that thing have an auto loader? I don't have that panzer in China. So Wiz132 slash one audience, let me know if on the comments that if that's an auto loader, because why did he sit there and not took the kill? I, I, I don't know. So it looks like they're moving back into position. I'm trying to move into the city, which is, I don't like cities with this tank. This tank is more better in the open fields than they do trying to snipe in the city. So if you're in Himmelsdorf, I apologize, audience. Like, you're not going to have a fun time, especially if you have no hold down capabilities. And the only reason I know how to play this tank, even though it's been out for a while, I get that. But to me, I'm no stranger to the lion. I free marked it for goodness sakes if anyone wants to look at that tank. But again, it, it's the same play style. Just hold down, keep your distance, and snipe. That's why I got the three marks in the first place in that panzer. But in but they reduced the accuracy and then they gave it to the Roger Dodger. I don't want the Roger Dodger to have the superior accuracy, although if you have it and you like it, fine, but don't do that to my lion tank. That holds personal feelings to me. That was one my grandfather gave to me before he passed away but anyway now that I have time to talk a little bit okay Roger Dodger Whew. it's gonna be hard to get used to this talking while playing tanks audience Roger Dodger is not a bad tank I love it I mean it's a barrier accuracy it's got decent gun elevation and decent accuracy to pen and it's got I said that right I basically it's got a it's great all all in all as a hold down tank, like a T29 hold down. Now for the hold, not good. Matchmaking, eh, not good if you're in tier tens. I mean you saw me do okay, but that's because our team just ruffle stomp and curve stomp the enemy pretty damn bad. So yeah, we did okay, and I capped off the base. So that's fine. For getting this tank now, buying it, it'll be worth it, but it's in a bundle deal. So, I'm going to do part two, so that way the video won't be too long, on the Bone Shaker. So, look forward to that, but I think I'm just going to do the Roger Dodger to make sure the video is not too long for your audience. And I came in third place, which, again, not bad. Not bad at all. Now let's see how much we earn, audience. Okay. Without premium, we would have made 68,722. With premium, we made 98,079. Not bad. Showing the crew training thing is okay, but it's not the greatest crew trainer. XP on the tank, you got 3,000. Without premium, 2,000. Crew XP, the same thing. And free XP, the same thing. So, again, not bad. I mean... It's okay. And let's see. There I am on the second leaderboard. Roger Dodger. Not bad. Not bad at all. So let's go back to the garage for the final verdict for the Roger Dodger. Okay. Now, final verdict for the Roger Dodger. It's got some problems, but it could be a very effective if you snipe with it. Only hold down sniping. Don't ever show the whole armor, especially if you have this tank. Making it a little bit bad because it's also a pretty much a guinea pig hamster shot to artillery. You will get artillery to death. Um, you got some good on gun accuracy, like almost glue 15 kind of panzer accuracy, which is very beautiful. Pen, very good. Um, APCR spending on it, uh, not really that good, but again, that's only if you're in high tiers. I didn't even have to use premium in that match, which thank God, because it had still a problem with that. Um, like I said, I have a, I'm a huge believer that premium tanks should not be spamming premium at all the time, especially when its main job is to make money. So it does its job making money. It goes in the tier 10s, which, again, you saw me fight okay, but that's because we were ruffle stopping them. So, what do I give this rating of the Roger Dodger? 
Um, I mean, if you're a tiger lover and a love lover, and you played it like the old days of Hold Down, you will love this tank. You will love it a lot. It is worth it for a tiger two lover and the love lover or lion to your American tongues. And to me personally, I have to give this rating. Ooh, this one's tough because it does have some problems. It does. I would give this tank probably a 6.9 out of 10 for my personal review. Hear me out. I know that you just saw was superior gun accuracy. Good hold down hold armor. Keep in the back. Good bounce some shells. Beautifully are doing that. However, it's still a German tank at the end of the day. It suffers hesh. It suffers heat. So you have to be careful. I may be saying it wrong. Uh, just the yellow rounds. It suffers those types of things. And it's a stationary tank. Meaning that it's not designed to take on four tanks at once. You have to keep like them all directly in front of you. Like... Like, this hands the Panzer overhead. If someone's shooting, like, here, here it will be okay. But if anyone's shooting here, here, and you're exposing your whole armor, you're going to get penned a lot. So it's one of those tanks that you have to keep in a good distance. So play it like a sniper. You don't have to if you don't want to follow. It's just my personal opinion as a German to show you what this tank is supposed to play as. But you don't have to if you don't want to. You could still be aggressive with it as long as you have teammates backing you up. So, that's my final verdict because it goes in the tier 10s and I despise anything going two tiers higher. I hate that because it makes you feel useless if your team is useless. Like that poor, you know, Chrysler K I was shooting at. Like, I know I was my own tier fighting him, but what can you do against 10s with that 90 mil gun? Or, sorry, 105 gun. It feels like a 90, though, so don't judge me, Americans. But still, uh, thank you so much for watching. I think I'm going to get the American Fury to in here as well to review the Bone Shaker, since it is an American tank. So, look that forward to in part two, and thank you all so much for watching. And you comrades, be safe, and I will see you in the next video. Avida's dead.